All right, D4, it came out, it happened. Uh, I will try to skip around from spoilers, but I think this- I think for us, right? What? Yeah, we're done with the story. Yeah, uh, we're done with the story. Uh, I will skip around, though most of what I think will show footage here will be from things that were in the beta. So uh, not any like new content, if, if there is such a thing. But yeah, D4's out. And for the most part, it they hit everything out of the park. Like it's it's good fucking game. I don't have any issue. I have smaller issues I, with it, but like yeah. Apart from that, it's it's. I shouldn't say it's out. It's out right now for early access. Early whatever. Yeah. Eighty dollar, hundred dollar tier folk. Uh, it comes out everywhere else tomorrow night at seven p.m. Eastern. I think is when it releases outside of early access launch. Um, I think, you know, the first thing we can say before we even get to the game, Diablo's got a track record and and people know Diablo 3 had terrible server issues. It launched on some platforms very well uh, this past, uh, this past yes. week. Uh, if you were unfortunately trying to play on PlayStation, it didn't launch very well. Uh, and, and here, I, this, yeah, I have to admit, this is, and, and to, to Pez Radar, uh, Adam, who's the community manager, his credit, this, this was such a weird situation. So I don't know if you heard about this. Here's what happened. It had a problem with the key licensing on the PlayStation. Okay. So in my chat, I had people confirm that they could buy $1.99 of in-game currency and it oh. would then let the game work. I heard about that, yeah. I had that, I had somebody say that in chat. And then at that point, like multiple people confirmed it after trying it themselves and started playing and stuff. And I think it was, um, I, I don't remember, somebody tweeted that like, yeah, man, Diablo 4, smoothest launch ever. And I replied to them and I was like, well, first of all, the real launch doesn't happen for a couple of days. So we'll see how the servers handle that. Like when most people get in. And second of all, I said about the PlayStation dollar thing. And Adam like was very quick to respond to be like, that is hearsay. Don't believe everything you read on the internet. Like, yeah. it turns out that it was something different. And to make sure the right information gets out there, it's both. <laughs> so well, basically, was... you could buy a dollar ninety nine of the currency, and it would then let you in. But it also turns out that it had something to do with the server syncing properly. It was Sony. And it looks like yeah. any download would have done. Any free download so would work from any PSN. free download would have worked. So it's not that. There are people who did the 199 were wrong. It's just that that that's that happened, and then that spread like wildfire, and a lot of people did it. Yeah. But that's not something that really the Diablo people could have controlled. Apparently, from the sounds of it, it was actually a problem on Sony's side. Right. They didn't properly make it so it was syncing on demand, so you had to like refresh it by doing a download. Um. But it was. It, it's what a it's, mess. I, really. I don't. I don't envy Adam's position. <laughs> no. <laughs> because dude, like you like... can't. You like, like it happened and a lot, it happened to a lot of people and, and, you know, to them, it's very real, but you know, and, and his face is like, he doesn't want misinformation to get spread around. So yeah, he, he has been kicking ass over the last like couple weeks. God, I hope he slept of, to be honest. Like, oh my God. Dude, I, I can don't... only imagine. Um, Whew. his, his, yeah, he has done so, so much over the last little bit, but I, I do want to say, I, I don't want to spread misinformation, but like, it's a weird situation where it's, it's very like, weird. Know, it worked but it's not why it worked and like, you know, so it was, it was weird. Very yeah. strange. Yeah. And like, you know, the, the uh, tinfoil hat, like that started immediately like, Oh, Microsoft is doing this because they're about to buy Activision Blizzard. So of course there's no problems oh, on the Xbox or on windows. And of right. course all the yeah. problems are placed in like it, it went, uh, that was, was very so ridiculous. Uh, yeah. That being yeah. said, PC wise, pretty okay. flawless. Like I, I didn't, so far it's been pretty. The game's okay. not fully out yet, so maybe this yeah. is gonna change when that happens. But it could also, it's hard to say, right? Because like it's an eighty dollar wall right now to jump into the game, and that's steep uh, for a lot of folk. So maybe that's gonna change um, when this game. What's even wilder, to the masses, but is the way that they've they've set it up like with a what is it a four day head start five day head start yeah like, something like that a lot of people something. are going to be done with this game by the time the second wave comes so yeah. like it's it's they 
possibly alleviated some relatively major issues by by staging like this um of course there's the argument where it's like yeah that's why you should have bumped back the hardcore contest until the main group got in and you know like, well, we'll and, get to all now, that that's yeah that's one but, thing where they kind of fucked up in my opinion but we'll get yeah to that in a second. agreed agreed but it's 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 going to be very interesting to see what happens in a few days uh two days i want to say a day and a half at this point uh what yeah. is it 7 p.m tomorrow i think it's 7 uh, hold on tomorrow yeah the exact time is 20 in 27 hours okay <laughs> so 27 hours 48 minutes so 7 p.m tomorrow yeah. 7 p.m et tomorrow is when the, the floodgates are going to open and i'm wondering is is it going to be like are the servers going to get destroyed or is it going to be like we're fine like smooth sailing yeah um if it is like smooth sailing then that's going to be impressive especially on the pc especially from the betas and like the the mess up there that's going to be pretty impressive i agree yeah um yeah yeah so like all all of that aside out i think you have to cover the server stuff first just because it's a diablo game and like diablo 3 historically had such uh just absolute right out of the gate shit show of a situation that it created whenever that was like a decade ago however long it was um i think that's worth mentioning right out of the gate uh oh. what's that also uh little little known fact also there was a, a a pretty nasty bug in beta that actually persisted to live and i think it still may be around for our clan, our clan leader could not invite people using the in-game system because if you keep Weird. the invite thing up and you mess with the invites, the invitations and the and the join request, it would crash his client. And this happened to him like 20 plus times. Okay, I, We had to set up yes. this whole system. Where you, but here's what's which is even crazier. He ran a test where he had another mod go in and look at the list. And then when he messed with it, they both crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so you could actually like anyone who was looking at that screen would crash if somebody if somebody did the right combination of things on it. Weird. This is a bug that was absolutely in beta as well. That happened to me in beta where I started the clan yeah. and I went to invite someone and it crashed and I was like, well, not doing any more clan stuff. Yeah, we, we basically had to come up with a whole system where like people to get in the clan had to friend him on Battle.net and then he would invite from that interface yeah. and all this stuff. But I will say it was a little... No, I will be frustrated on his behalf that the in-game clan system had known bugs that persisted through beta. Uh, that that kind of sucks. That kind of sucks. There are still bugs in this game wholeheartedly. Yeah. Like yeah. I've encountered uh, some of the late game stuff. There's an in-game thing called the Nightmare Sigil, uh, which is basically kind of maps from PoE. I don't know if you've done any of those yet. Oh, I haven't. No, I'm doing. Uh, I'm taking my first look at the end game tonight. I'm literally standing in front of Lorath, and it's like talk to Lorath with how to do the end game, and I have not talked to him yet. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So it it's they're just maps, right? Uh, they're they're essentially maps from Path of Exile. Uh, when you group with them, though, sometimes and and I think someone said Adam, the the community manager, was tweeting about it. It's a layering server bug, to where if you're in a party every once in a while all load into the dungeon, right? And then if someone else loads in in my party, it boots me out of the dungeon and brings them into a new dungeon. And then if I log in, it boots them out of the dungeon and brings me into the dungeon. And so essentially you just lose the thing. You just lose it. Like, How are the hardcore players and teams dealing with that? Well, the hardcore stuff is basically you're inside of a dungeon for three minutes. And I think they're reforming parties after they leave the dungeon every single time. Like the mm. hardcore folk have it down to there, kind of there's, science so there's like workarounds yeah okay. there's there's a i have not seen too much of that um that i know of but that there's a lot of like bugs that are kind of related to that stuff um for the most part though if you're just looking to like jump in the game and play have fun with the story you're gonna have the, for the most part a pretty flawless time like you're not gonna run into any like game breaking issues i haven't seen or heard of anything that's been like bad in that realm. Um, so we have talked about the negative a pretty good amount. Yeah. But I do feel like we got to, we got to like, this was my tweet after the, the game. Just roll credits on D4. This game is just awesome. AAA in pretty much every way. Enjoyed my time in it beginning to end. I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with this. Great job to the team. And this is a great addition to the franchise. Yeah, I agree. That it, was, I mean, like the game itself, like when you, when you get through the problems with it, like it's, it's a fun game. It's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. I'll be surprised if another game has better music than this one this year. It's very like, good music. Oh my god! 
like it's, the music in this game is 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 mind blowing at times. Like it completely like from from not only just being cool, but to like adding to the effect of scenes and you know the the crescendoing with certain events and things like that. Like it is it is a masterclass. Yeah, in, I, in how music can make a game better. I would step out. Uh, like oh, everyone's back. saying wait for Final Fantasy sixteen. Okay, I, that's I agree cool. with that. But I would also take one <laughs> step back and say, like, just sound in general, because the voice acting is oh, yeah. not like actually Let's surprising how good it is. <laughs> the whole presentation of this game. Yeah. The whole presentation. Very, the graphics, I agree. The cutscenes, the voices, the music, the animations and how they all like perfectly connect. Yeah. Um, like it is it is a this is a triple A game. It yes. plays and feels like a triple A game. And that's why people are, uh, I keep getting all the time. Like, do you think it's worth the money? I don't think it's worth the hundred dollars right now. Cause you only have like a day, but is this game going to yeah. be worth 70 bucks? Absolutely. I absolutely think it is. If you like ARPGs and, and you want to experience the story through the lens of an ARPG, this is absolutely like a, it's a triple A ARPG. Yeah. Um, now, uh, is this a game you recommend? Like is this a game you recommend to anyone? Yeah, like I would. Someone who's not yeah, into like ARPGs. Yep. Is this is this a, a fun game for? It's Blizzard doing what Blizzard is... does best and taking a genre of games and making it approachable for everyone. Okay. I, I will I will say personally, I have been asked by people saying I didn't like Diablo three. Would you recommend Diablo four? And I will say where it's like it's still an ARPG. So that's kind of sure. like if you're if you, if you've been saying like I don't like fighting games, would I like Street Fighter Six? I mean, it's a fighting game, you know. Like it, it's still an ARPG. It's just a beautiful. It's it's all the best parts of an ARPG. So if you kind of like them, I think you'll kind of like it. But if you just don't like ARPGs, it's still just a it's just an ARPG. Yeah. You know, it's it's just probably it's, one of the best in terms of performance and or in in terms of the presentation. But it's an ARPG. Yeah, they, so, you know, it's not reinventing the wheel with that by any degree. Review wise, I saw a lot of people saying like Blizzard didn't do anything new to the ARPG genre. They just made a good ARPG and like didn't yeah. take any risk. And I agree wholeheartedly to that. Like the game is just Dude. fun to play it. Every every five seconds you're getting loot, you're killing a mob. It's not very hard if you're playing on world tier one. I think I died once and I was pretty haphazardly like running through the entire campaign. Like you're just generally going to have that dopamine hit kind of nonstop <laughs> as you're playing through it. And then you're rewarded with even more like cutscenes, which code talked about already, but they are like, oh, they man. are blizzard this... cutscenes that you expect from blizzard of old. Like it is as, as you get towards the end of the game, there was one specific cutscene where, where, that cutscene ended, and and I'm gonna go ahead and repeat it because we're on drop frames. A cutscene ended, and I'm just on stream, like fifteen thousand people in there. I was like, that was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, like it was like that's, that, I, I I can count the number of times on one hand that I have dropped an f bomb like during my prime time stream. But like I I finished this one particular cutscene. I was just like, that was, like, oh my god. Like I had goosebumps for like seventy five percent of the cutscene. I was just sitting there like, like it was awesome. It was great. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that was that was that was pretty phenomenal in that regard. And going back to what you were saying about like the 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 basic thing, I agree. It's the same thing like with Hades. Like Hades took a tried and true established of the roguelite, and then they turned that into they just took that concept and did it so well yeah. that it was incredible. Now, am I saying Diablo Four is gonna be like a game of the year? That's gonna be very subjective and also has a lot of baggage with it. Um, yeah. But that being said, they did do the same thing with Diablo Four, where they took the established standard arpg carried that directly into this game and then just made that about as polished and as as pretty and sounding as good as you possibly could so yeah yeah team did okay. a great job they should be they should be very proud of this have either of you tried or heard about controller compatibility it's probably the best it's way great. to play the game controllers really? awesome in this are, game yep are you they, are you, either of you using that no i i enjoy not, mouse and but keyboard. i but i tried it I used yeah, it for yeah. like I think in the beta I used controller for about half an hour just to try it. Felt great, dude. Yeah, like it, it felt yeah. just fine. Everything kind of worked. Uh, the second you start hitting buttons, all of your your interface turns over to controller, and um, it's very smooth. Z Tar the the targeting worked pretty well too. In Diablo three, they kind of like showed the industry that you can make an ARPG work on a controller, and they basically took that and carried it on to Diablo four. And for a lot of people i yeah. think i think it's kind of maybe class-based 
I don't think targeting of spells is that good on a controller, but if you're playing like a barbarian or a rogue, uh, it's pretty good. Um, I'm guessing targeting of spells is like twin stick style. I would imagine. I honestly don't know how it works. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't Fair. know how it, I have not uh, booted up and like played my, my sork with it, but um, it's got couch co-op on console. It's all um, um, whatever it's called, where you can play with like, you could play with me on PC if you're on uh, cross platform. Sorry, there we go. I got there eventually. Um, yeah. That's all implemented, yeah. so you can play whatever you want, whenever you want. Uh, okay, it's all the same. People account. are saying auto targeting with controller is good. It oh, makes okay, it good. cool. Yeah, so it's good. To yeah, hear. that's cool. Yeah. No, if I, I mean that's the the it's it's a game that I would love to play with. Uh, it would feel more comfortable for me with a controller. Totally. Uh, absolutely. Um. And uh, the the thing that I am a little bit concerned about is the the inventory. There's no Tetris. It's literally just a slot for an inventory item, and you have I don't know twenty four okay. slots or thirty. Yeah, slots there's, or it's not a standard Diablo. It's very very basic and straightforward. Yeah, and at any point so you don't T run back to the the uh, you teleport back to town instantly. You're usually like five steps from a vendor. Go over, click a few buttons, your inventory is clear, and you just go right back in. Okay. Yep. It's they've it's it's Blizzard, right? Like they made it approachable for the masses. That that was their goal with this, and they in a lot of ways succeeded. Um, 